Lori Trahan is a candidate for the 3rd Congressional District. She just won that razor-thin primary to go to the general election in November. And, Lori, thanks so much for coming into the studio tonight. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you. For people just getting to know you, why are you running? I'm running to be a voice for families like the one I grew up in. I grew up in Lowell, Massachusetts, and uh, we were one of those families that lived paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and I think that there's there are too many families across the district uh, across the state of Massachusetts that are feeling that economic anxiety and so you know it's uh, it's about affordable health care mm -hmm. being able to afford your uh, your children's tuition and making sure that you have a good paying job so yeah. You yeah. won that recount in the 3rd yeah. Congressional District in the Democratic primary. But how many votes did you say? 145 votes. So every vote counts. Uh, there has been a wave of progressive candidates this year, almost in response to the Trump administration. Yeah. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez in New York, Ayanna Presley here in Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, do you consider yourself a progressive, a moderate? Where do you put yourself in the political spectrum? Yeah, no, it's a great question. In fact, the, uh, the Boston Globe sort of coined it best uh, when calling me a pragmatic progressive. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I've got all those progressive values. Uh, I think right now I love that we have a bold vision for the future. I think that the Democratic Party needs to unite around a bold uh, vision and an optimistic path forward for 2018 midterms and the 2020 uh, presidential election. But I'm also really focused on what can be accomplished. Like, what can we get done? Where can we find coalitions to uh, fix some real problems that are affecting mm. families? Today. Speaking of real problems affecting <laughs> families, in the midst of your recount, of course, one of the big stories that we've covered the last few oh. weeks is the disaster in yeah. uh, the 3rd Congressional District, yeah. Andover, North Andover, Lawrence, and the gas pipeline explosions. What do, would you have liked to have seen happen differently in the aftermath of the disaster? Right. And also, what repercussions do you think Columbia Gas should face? Right now, uh, you know, they're handing out hot plates and they're handing out space heaters, but we know that's not going to assuage the concerns of uh, seniors, people who have health issues, uh, and then young families. So uh, I'm looking forward to the investigation. Uh, and the outcome of that investigation that Senators uh, Markey and Warren have called upon. I think we have to know much more about what caused this. How do we prevent it in the future? The other big issue in the news this week and for the last few weeks has been the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. You, of course, in the House will not have a say, uh, even if you were in, in Congress at this point. Where do you stand on his confirmation and the current investigation being conducted by the FBI? So Thursday and Friday, those were very important days for women, uh, for our country. The fact that the U.S. Senate almost uh, advanced uh, Kavanaugh's nomination despite the compelling uh, testimony and ignoring the testimony of Dr. Ford was a disgrace. Uh, I think that this FBI investigation, no matter what, should not be constrained by time. It should lead us to the truth. Uh, that's what we deserve. This, you know, the, this is one of the most important jobs uh, in our country. It's a lifetime appointment, and, uh, and we have to you know, hold the standards very high here. Would you be a no on him? Yes. We did want to ask you about some specific issues. You call yourself a pragmatic progressive. Um, we're looking for sort of a yes or no answer sure. on, on some issues. We're just going to throw them at you. Are you for Medicare for all? Yeah, so I think Medicare for all should be the aspiration of our country. Uh, and we should be transforming and always think about how we should, can transform our health care system. In the meantime, and if we are years away from that, we do have to do something about rising prescription mm. uh, uh, price, uh, drug prices. We have to do something about the fact that families can't afford their premiums. What about abolish ICE? Do you support that? Yeah, I'm for radically transforming ICE. I, you know, I don't believe that anybody, even the people who are for abolishing ICE truly believe that we should just stop doing everything that the agency was set out to do. But clearly the mission is, uh, is far afield from uh, what it was set up to do. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make sure that we bring humanity back to the agency and we also you know, secure our borders. Would you support impeachment for President Trump? 
You know, I am first and foremost, uh, uh, you know, supportive of keeping and protecting the independent investigation and, uh, and you know, Mueller's mm -hmm. uh, investigation because that, I think, is going to lead us to, uh, to that vote, which will be uh, a very straightforward vote for, for all of us. You want to see what the, the investigation says absolutely. first. Absolutely. You, know, I, I, you know, I was a staff person during the Clinton impeachment trial, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you, want, you, know, you want to have a, a, a trial and a vote that's based on facts. Nikki Sagas kept a pretty low profile as a member of Congress. Is that your style, or would you weigh in more on national issues than she did? So, I don't know if I agree with the assessment that <laughs> Congresswoman <laughs> Sagas. I mean, from my vantage point, she used her committee, her House Armed Services Committee, to really change and transform the culture uh, for women in the military. I mean, she's, you know, Everything from changing the way they uh, designed and wore body armor to uh, to changing and really making a, an impact on sexual harassment. So, you know, I, I think I think it was more. You didn't see her in the news <laughs> twice. Yeah, she was on national TV a she lot. She was on yeah. national no, TV. No, yeah, and I don't think that's her style. I don't think mm -hmm. she is uh, is in it you? for um, you know grabbing headlines. But she works really hard. And so, like her, I'd like to follow in those footsteps. I want to be effective. I want to be. Uh, I want to perform um, so that people have confidence in. The the representation that uh, that I hopefully have the uh, the privilege of of, uh, of giving them after as, this election. As a last question, there's been a lot of talk this year about is this the year of the woman? Uh, much like 1992, uh, you of course are a woman who has advanced the general election. There have been a lot of them throughout the country. Do you think that women make better politicians than men, and if so, why? You know, I'm. I'm elated that so many women are getting off the sidelines. Uh, you know, the 2016 election changed everything for me. Uh, so I understand why so many women are running. And even as I talked to moms, you know, this past weekend after watching the hearings, I mean, people are genuinely afraid of what the future might hold for their daughters, you know, for their, for their health, for their economic opportunity, for, for their safety. I don't need to read another study to know that better decisions are made when more women at the table. And we frankly need many, many more women in boardrooms across this country and in the halls of Congress. Well, we'll see what happens in November. Laurie yes. Trahan, thanks so much for coming in Thank tonight. you. Thank you. I we appreciate, appreciate it. it. It's nice to meet you. It was good meeting you. Absolutely. Thank you. you too. <laughs> Best of luck. Thanks. And coming up this Wednesday, we're going to be talking with Lori's Republican opponent, Rick Green. You can catch that interview right here at 8 on MyTV38.